Hello everyone, my name is Big Lord and you're welcome to the part two of the series of trainings, of free trainings we are doing for to prepare you for interviews for, as a healthcare assistant in the UK. We're going to be having 20 different videos, all informative videos, and for you to be able to get notified when we upload a new video, please subscribe, click on the subscribe button so that you get notification when we post the videos, okay? So the topic for today is food hygiene, all right? Food hygiene, it's, it's very important that you understand how to handle food, you know, in, in the healthcare setting, okay? Because as you'll be taking care of your patient, you might be required to feed them in some cases, uh, make their food, prepare their meals, you know, and uh, this will involve you, uh, you have to be handling their food, you have to prepare their food, you know, so the interviewer wants to check how knowledgeable you are in terms of food handling, you know, in terms of the best practices that is uh, safe for handling food. Uh, do you have the background knowledge on what it takes to handle food, to avoid food poisoning, you know, to avoid cases where uh, you would be putting the patient at any form of health risk okay so it will be very very to be of an advantage to you if you have some basic knowledge on how to handle food because it is going to help you in the discharge of your duties all right so on this uh training in this particular topic we will be talking about food safety for your for your patients and uh, food safety in such ways that will prevent uh, cross contamination and uh, a whole lot of uh, other things that would help you to deliver your job effectively so for the purpose of your uh, this training it is to help you to be able to answer questions that the interviewer might be asking you when it comes to food hygiene like I've said in our previous videos, there's going to be 20 sessions, all right? So you really cannot tell where your questions will be coming during your interview. And that is why we are trying to cover as many areas as possible, you know, that would give you the background knowledge you need to be able to answer questions from your interviewer during the course of the uh, interview for the position of a healthcare assistant in the UK. All right. So... That right now, we in this training, we are going to try to understand the importance of food safety procedures and food and safe food handling, okay, in the care sector because uh, there are some uh, hazards that can take place if you don't follow these guidelines, okay. You have to have some level of personal hygiene, which is very essential when you are preparing the food for the patient. You know, you might be preparing the food in the kitchen. You have to observe some personal hygiene. You know, the best way to clean up after yourself, after you are done in the kitchen, the best way to handle and store food in a safe way, you know, the best temperature that is necessary for you to store the food in the refrigerator, you know, these are things we're going to be talking about in this video, you know. So, at the end of this video, you should be able to uh, answer questions that might come from the interviewer, okay? The interviewer might ask you, for example, and tell you what is, where do you store um, red meat, for example, you know? What position in the fridge? You know, there's a fridge and there are different levels in the in the refrig in the freezer, for example. He's asking you, what do you store in the freezer? What do you store in the fridge? You know, how do you label the items you store in the refrigerator? How many days? What is the shelf shelf life of this particular food item that you are putting in the fridge? You know, the importance of labeling any food item in the refrigerator or in the freezer, whatever item you are putting in inside, uh, whether the freezer or the fridge, it's important you label it, okay? The interviewer might want to know how conversant you are in, in terms of labeling food items in the fridge. You also have to put the date that item was put in the fridge. You label it and you put the name of the item, the date it was put in the fridge. And if it is an item that is open, there's also the best practice, the, an approved way of uh, labeling such an item. Okay, so in the course of this training, we are going to be uh, training you on how to under, understand the best 
uh, practice in terms of keeping good hygiene in the workplace as a healthcare assistant. All right, there's there is the best way to store dairy products, you know, meat products and poultry products and fish and all that. All right, so all these things we will be learning in the course of this training, so that at the end of the day, when the questions come from an interviewer in an area that has to do with food hygiene you'll be able to answer okay so in the course of this uh, training also we're going to be telling uh, uh, bringing to your knowledge the importance of uh, hygiene in preparation and handling of food you know i'll also be telling you about some tips on good nutrition and how important uh, hydration is for your patients all right you have to also understand the importance of maintaining uh, the proper well-being of your patient how to observe and notice some signs and symptoms of poor nutrition and uh, poor hydration in your patients okay because fluids and nutrition is very important to maintain the health and well-being of your patient so how to watch out for these signs and symptoms and to avoid poor nutrition is also important so if you're able to display the knowledge of all these things in the course of your interview it increases your chances of being shortlisted for the job okay now uh, let's start with the, the very very uh part that is really common okay food poisoning how do you avoid food poisoning okay food that that's that about let me i'm going to be giving you some examples some causes of food poisoning number one food poisoning can be caused when the food is not properly cooked okay when the food is when you there's something they call undercooking when the food is not properly cooked when it is not properly uh cooked to the temperature that suits uh, that particular type of food you know that can cause food poisoning okay when you use leftovers that can also cause uh, food poisoning if the person handling the food is infected it can also cause food poisoning when you store a hot food below 60 degrees celsius that can also cause food poisoning that is why if you're going to keep a food uh hot keep it as high as 70 degrees and above if you're going to keep it cool keep it lower you know and make sure it's in the refrigerator and the temperature is at the, the correct temperature level that suits that particular food all right now the case of cooked food it can be contaminated due to maybe being exposed to bacteria you know maybe uh it is uh, not maybe the cooling uh food it's cooling too slowly before refrigeration you know you didn't allow it to uh cool very well you just uh, maybe you put it in the microwave and you didn't allow it to cool by itself you know that can change the the uh the, the taste of the food and not make it palatable all right so these are things that you need to know in the course of discharge of your duties you know when you are handling food it is important that uh you you know that you are legally responsible to ensure that the type of food you are giving to your patient does not cause them illness or harm okay because food poisoning is, is can be very 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 uh dangerous it can be life-threatening it can cause even more disease and sickness to the person you are taking care of so you have to really be careful when you are handling food okay the effective temperature that controls the, the type of food you are giving to your patient is also important that you monitor the temperature sometimes you have to check if the food is not too hot for the patient so that doesn't burn their mouth when they are eating it okay these are things you need to know when you are giving your food to your patient all right so in going forward if if you are in an interview now and your interviewer wants to know uh if you give a patient your the food and they don't they don't want to eat what will be your response okay if you present a patient with their breakfast for example and they are saying they don't want to eat now the most important thing is you try to persuade them to eat and if they still decline you have to put it down and record it that you provided them with food and they declined the food okay you have to record it because it is important that you take note of every action because if you didn't record it that means it didn't happen 
okay if you didn't record that you served them and they didn't take the food that means it didn't happen all right so when you are serving your patient the food and they refuse it because they are probably you no know, they don't have appetite you have to put it down in your record that you offered the meal to the patient but they decline that should be the response to that kind of question during the interview okay now the food and drink that we give to our patient is what makes their body to function properly some of them are probably having this food then they will take a medication because they need to eat a healthy and balanced diet you know because every individual needs nutrients that their body would use to function properly so if you're not taking care of a patient you have to also give them a balanced diet okay some you have to balance diet includes back uh, carbohydrate vitamins mineral protein and fiber okay if an individual's diet does not contain right balance of nutrients it needs to function properly it will become malnourished okay and uh, if you are asked to give a patient food morning and there's lunch and there's dinner and you're not eating and you're not recording it in your notes and you're not letting your manager know of course that patient will be malnourished and that could be a serious issue so you have to record it and notify your manager immediately that your patient is not feeding well okay so these are things that you have to take note when you are taking care of your patient you have to make sure that you keep records and notify uh your manager immediately there is a uh, malnutrition in sight okay now uh the importance of good nutrition okay because when when you're giving your patients food they consume this meal and it will help them to recover and it make them feel better when your patients start feeling better it even makes your own job easier also okay so when you are confronted with a question that says uh how do you wash your hands for example when you want to uh how do you prepare to feed your patient okay very important before you touch any food item you must wash your hands in the most appropriate way the procedure of washing your hands is very important all right your thumbs your wrists you know you have to spend like 20 20 up to 20 seconds or 30 seconds 20 to 30 seconds to wash your hands and make sure that it is thoroughly clean okay now there are some bacteria that and when you're washing your hands you have to wash with the right soap and make sure that you dab it very well okay you have to wash and dry your hands thoroughly you know before you undo food okay and you, have, you do not undo food if you are any symptoms if you have any symptoms of diarrhea or you are vomiting you have to inform your supervisor or, or immediately so that you don't pass on that to the person you are taking care of okay now you, you do not chew gum don't chew gum or you be on your telephone when you are handling food that you want to give to your patient always wear clean clothes okay you have to keep all your workplace clean your work surfaces clean all right now someone asked me uh during one of my trainings in the past that a detergent is it a good cleaning uh is it is the detergent good for disinfecting the surfaces okay definitely if you ask this kind of question during your interview is a detergent good for disinfecting surfaces the answer is no it's, 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 uh, a detergent may remove uh, grease and wipe surfaces clean but they won't remove bacteria all right that is not the work of uh, the work of a uh, detergent is to clean and remove grease and to clean surfaces and not to remove bacteria 100 percent all right so you have to make sure that the beans in the kitchen is covered and protected effectively and you have to remove every form of contamination that can lead to infestation of pests and all of those things all right so that is very important when we are handling food okay and you also have to make sure that you keep away every item that can cause uh cross contamination all right when you are putting the food item in the refrigerator you have to arrange them in the proper way such that it doesn't cause cross contamination you know there there is a place where you put the red meat there's a place where you put the the 
scan items. There's a place where you put the items that are in containers. You know, there's a place where you put dairy products and every item has its own place. You have to label it also because these things make uh, contamination easy if they are not arranged properly okay and it also has to be in the right temperature all right if it is uh it's supposed to be in the refrigerator it has to be in the right temperature if, if it has to be if it's in the freezer it has to be in the right temperature you know bacteria's favorite temperature to grow and multiply is between five degrees and 63 degrees any food item that is uh whether outside of this temperature it makes bacteria to grow very fast okay make sure that it's either the refrigerator is below five degrees you know or that particular food item is in is being warmed and it is higher than 70 degrees okay these are very important things points you have to note okay when you are handling food items in the healthcare sector all right now so if you are in an interview for example and your interviewer wants to know your knowledge about uh, food safety okay they might ask you for example they might want to ask you that uh, what will you do if your uh, patient is complaining about the taste of a, of a particular uh, food that they have been served okay now if a patient is complaining about the food all right and that especially when they are telling you maybe that is not what they've requested for okay you don't have to get confrontational with them you don't have to get angry you just have to be very patient with them and try to understand their concerns okay that is a complaint they are trying to raise to you and you have to be patient with them and you would listen and you will take note of their complaint and then you can then find a solution to it okay so when you are in a, in a situation where you are giving a patient their food and they have concerns about it you know all you need to do is to listen to them and then you'll be able to uh make some adjustments that will suit them all right so moving forward okay uh food safety is very important in the healthcare sector because uh our patients that are taking care of they eat this food to make them feel better all right so good nutrition and hydration is very key okay some religions forbid some food you have to understand that there are some people that have uh, uh maybe uh jewish okay they have their beliefs you have to understand you have to understand what the do's and don'ts some people they don't eat meat some people you know they have some culture you know so you have to understand this thing so that you don't uh upset the person you are taking care of all right you have to apply dignity and respect when you are taking care of your patient okay some of them they cannot feed by themselves you have to feed them you have to assist them in feeding okay you have to under, under understand that uh, some cases you have to do uh, assisted feeding you have to be happy to help somebody to feed that is part of your role as a healthcare assistant all right some people have a risk uh, they have a risk of choking okay that means you, if you want to feed them you have to make sure that they are seated in upright position such that they don't risk choking in some cases some 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 uh, patients you need to uh, uh, put thickener in in their fluid so that they don't choke these are things that you will get to know during your induction but you also need in case an interviewer asks you you're about to feed a patient that is at the risk of choking okay how do you uh, ensure that that such a patient doesn't choke all right the best answer to such a question is you would ensure that the patient is seated in an upright position and uh, he, he, after feeding the patient you will also ensure that the patient is in that position for some time for the food to digest before you put them back to to bed okay these are important things that you need to know okay when the patient and you also have to be aware of uh, uh labels on, on by the bedside of your patients to make sure that uh, you 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 see the type of allergies they have you know the, the the caution you have to observe when you are feeding them okay all some of these things will also be indicated in their care plan and in in their uh uh in the ways the, in the set, person centered arrangement that they have with uh, your care provider, which says how they want to be fed, how they want to be treated. Okay, so these are important things that will help you to uh, 
and do food very well in a care setting. All right. So moving forward, uh, when you are handling food, okay, please try as much as possible not to start eating when you are feeding your patients too. Okay, don't because you're at that point you are not on break and you're not allowed to eat when you are uh, feeding your patient. All right, you are not supposed to do anything that would uh, distract the patient. Your main focus when you are treat attending to your patient is to attend to them 100%. You are not supposed to be eating or doing any other thing apart from caring for them when you are taking care of them. All right. So, uh, moving forward, uh, there is something very important also that you need to know, okay? When people receive a type of care or support, you know, particularly long-term care, you know, an assessment is always made about the, their nutrition level and their hydration, okay? There is a record of how much fluid they must take in a day. You have to make sure that you give them a particular quantity, volume of water or fluid per day. If you don't take water, it might be juice. It might be tea, you know, that, that depends on the patient you are taking care of. Some people that have uh, high blood cholesterol levels may be advised that they, they, they don't take saturated fats such as butter or fried items. So you have to observe these things and know these are things you will tell your interviewer if they ask you what knowledge you have about feeding your patient. Okay, you tell them that you only feed them based on their care plan. That should be your response when they ask you, how do you feed your patient? All right. Now, some people have high blood pressure. So because of that, there is limited salt. You know, they have to control the salt they take. Some people are very fat or they are obese. So they limit the sugar and fatty foods that they take. Some people have food allergies. All these things you have to know before you start feeding your patients. All right. So these are very important things that you need to know. All right. Now, in some care setting, they, they apply technology in feeding your patient. All right. There is a, maybe a clock or a reminder message, you know, to, to, to remind the, you that it is time to give such a uh, quantity of fluid, you know, so that it will meet their daily requirements, you know, for that day. All right. So in some cases also, you have some cutleries that are designed in a way just to make it easy for the patients to feed by themselves. And in some cases, they might be uh, assisted. You know, there's something they call peg feeding. You know, also, it's a form of feeding that is uh, assisted for people who cannot eat by themselves. All right. So these are things that you need to know. OK, when you are uh, in an interview room and the question coming to you, has to do with food and hygiene, you know, handling food, you know, making sure that the type of uh, uh, the way you are handling the food is in acceptable and it is in conformity with uh, best practices uh, as a healthcare assistant. All right. Because when you handle food in a way that is not acceptable, you risk bringing infection, you risk bringing uh, any uh, contamination to the patient. And you don't want to do that because you put the the uh, patient at risk, all right, of infection. And that makes it even more uh, complex, okay? Now, food poisoning is an illness caused by eating contaminated food. You know, it is not uh, serious for some people, but it's usually very serious for some people, okay? So you have to avoid, you know, that uh, contamination. You have, to, you have to be very, very conscious of, uh, your your levels of hygiene when you are handling food because you don't want to uh, bring food poison to the person you are taking care of. You know you have to ensure that your hands are clean and you have them thoroughly washed before handling food. You know when you are asked that how do you present a food to your client, the first thing to your to your patient, the first thing you say is wash your hands. You know because even before you touch the food. You know, you have to wash your hands. Very, very important response to an interview question. Now, how, what do you understand by cross-contamination? That can also be a question during an interview. You know, it, it's very easy. Just respond to your interviewer by saying that, you know, raw and cooked foods. Raw is the food that they have not cooked at all. Raw that is the food that is coming raw. The food that is coming from the uh, shop that is still fresh. That is raw. Cooked food 
is food that has been cooked that is ready to consume. Now, to avoid cross contamination, the fact that you are putting both cooked food and raw food in the same refrigerator can result in cross contamination, meaning that the fresh one can contaminate the cooked one. Okay, now they can easily be spread from bacteria can easily spread from the fresh one to the cooked one so to avoid that your raw meat should be kept separately from cooked or ready to eat meat for example so these are things that you need to know okay because your your, your interviewer might ask you how do you store a fresh meat how do you, they are both meat they, they might want to confuse confuse you by saying how do you store a fresh meat and a cooked meat Okay, you respond to them by saying to avoid cross contamination, you store a fresh meat separately from a cooked meat. All right, all right, so it is very important that we, I keep repeating it, washing our hands because it limits the spread of bacteria. Our hands are the transport system for bacteria, so effective washing of our hands helps to prevent. Uh, spread of bacteria when handling food all right and in the in the healthcare sector there's what they call color coding in the kitchen okay very very important all right you need to understand that in order to prevent cross contamination different food types including raw and food cooks that could cause food poisoning you know should be handled differently okay now for example red is a normal color for is a conventional color in the kitchen for raw meat so anything that you are going to be handling with the red colored uh, maybe tray or knife is for red meat anything that is colored red you know any maybe tray or chopping board that is colored red will be for red meat that's what they call color coding you know i mean be blue color blue is for raw fish any item in the kitchen that is colored blue is for raw fish. You cannot use the item, a, for example, a chopping board that is colored blue to go and start be cutting uh, raw meat. That is uh, that is uh, that is wrong, and that is not allowed because that causes contamination. All right. Purple is used for allergic foods. White is used for dairy products. White brown is used for vegetables. Green is used for salads and fruits. Yellow is used, used for cooked meat. So understanding these colors is very important. Uh, let me say it again so that you will know. Okay. Uh, red is used for raw red meat. Raw meat. Blue is used for raw fish. Yellow is used for cooked meat. Green is used for salads and fruits. Brown is used for vegetables. White is used for dairy products such as milk, you know, and all that. Then purple is used for allergic foods. Okay, so that is color coding in the kitchen, in the healthcare setting. All right, so these are important colors you need to know so that you will handle food properly, you know, in the care environment. All right, now do not leave food unattended to. You have to make sure any food that you are not using should be covered or put in the refrigerator. These are very important things you need to know. Now, having prepared the food finish, there is also in the important part, which is the cleaning of your of your space after preparing the food. All right, you have to know that uh, your dish clothes has, you have to wash and change all dish clothes, the towels and the oven gloves. You have to wash them regularly. Okay, every utensils, uh, kitchen utensils and serving dishes you use, you have to wash them thoroughly. There is always uh, a a dishwashing machine. You know present in every kitchen so that you would your, your job is easier all right now you have to use the correct cleaning uh materials you know for cleaning the surfaces that you've worked on just to remove bacteria and debris okay so that your environment is clean all right now the detergents are for cleaning surfaces okay disinfectants are for removing bacteria all right so that all of them have different purposes okay make sure that for before you use any item that you're not familiar with you read the manufacturer's guidance and you read the label okay some of them need to be diluted before you use and you also have to use the correct ppe when you're in the kitchen all right to avoid cross contamination very important use the correct ppe to avoid cross contamination to avoid the spread of germs 
All right. Now, the, also another important part is the temperature that you need to put some items. For example, the dairy products have their own temperature in the refrigerator. Okay. If you are putting a, a cooked product, there's an appropriate temperature. And if it is uncooked, there's an appropriate temperature. All these are contained in the policy that is, uh, you know, uh, will be given to you during your induction and on the job training. All these things I'm telling you now is for you to be able to answer interview questions, you know, so that you can show your interviewer that you have some understanding and some knowledge about what you want to start as a healthcare assistant. All right. So moving forward, it's important that we know that when a food item, when a canned food is is open, okay, you don't need you have to put it in the refrigerator. Okay, if it is unopened, it doesn't need to be in the refrigerator. That means that when a can item is still covered, it's still in the can, and they have not opened it at all. Okay, you know, you don't have to put it in the refrigerator. Okay, it's only when you have opened it that it's at the risk of being uh, exposed to bacteria. That's when you have to put it in the refrigerator. So I, I hope that uh, with this uh, training, you have been able to understand that good hygiene. Is essential in a care home. As a healthcare assistant, you have to observe proper and excellent good food hygiene, you know, to reduce the risk and probably eliminate, you know, the risk of contaminated food, causing foodborne illness, okay? And hygiene and the correct use of your PPE. PPE is personal protective equipment. That's your apron, your hand gloves, and your face mask, okay? All these things you must be observed before, during, and after you are presenting food to your patient, okay? Now, food, food, food that you are preparing also, you must also prepare them based using the correct color coding items. You cannot use the, the chopping board for fish to cut meat. You cannot use the chopping board for dairy products or the color coding, you know, every type of food item has its own color coding, okay? This will ensure the prevention of cross contamination. You also have to understand that bacteria can grow on multiple surfaces within a variety of environment. They can grow on any surface. So you have to adhere to the food, the basic standard, you know, of uh, food handling uh, procedures to prevent bacteria from contaminating the surfaces that you work on. Always make sure you clean with the appropriate cleaning uh, item so that you will get uh, effective disinfectant results, okay? You need to disinfect all surfaces to prevent bacteria from spreading in the kitchen, all right? So these are important things you need to know. And when you are asked any question that is based on food handling, you should be able to respond, you know? Having a thorough understanding of this uh, topic will help you to answer questions that come from your interviewers during your job interview okay so at the end of this session i believe you have been able to understand the basic principles you know to be able to answer questions that might come for you during your interview for the position of a healthcare assistant this is part two and this is a topic uh, we have named handling food in the healthcare sector you know how to handle food in the healthcare sector as a healthcare assistant. We are still going to be having other sessions that will take care of some other topics, you know, because you are not sure where your interviewer will be asking your question, but you need to know basic knowledge. You have to have basic knowledge of uh, procedures on how to handle food items, you know, and all of that. Okay. Thank you for watching this training and uh, you watch out for our next session that will be talking more on other topics that a healthcare assistant needs to know so that they can perform well during their interview for the position of a healthcare assistant. Please subscribe to this channel and share and uh, we'll, you will get notification when we'll have more videos that will be coming up very, very soon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.